dystopian futures and cyberpunk settings. These sorts of undesirable, uncomfortable themes combined aren't common in video gaming, which is why it's a nice treat to see one crop up. If by chance you were looking for a new one, Observer, recently released in August, is the game for you. Categorized as a survival horror game, you play as Detective Daniel Lazarski, an observer, who utilizes unique tools and implants to investigate crime scenes and hack into the memories of people he comes across for answers. Welcome to the second in our short series of spooky game reviews for Halloween. Pull your bowl of candy close and prepare to enter the world of Observer. Observer is a very strange combination of game. We've already discussed that the game takes place in a dystopian, cyberpunk future, but how many games out there within these particular settings let you actually investigate crime scenes? The game gives you a few important tools to investigate. A biovision for detecting and scanning biological evidence, and electromagnetic vision, which lets you detect and scan electronics. You don't necessarily have to scan every bit of evidence, but some instances require you to find a way out of an area utilizing these tools. Besides documenting crimes, you'll find yourself often using an implant known as the Dream Eater in order to hack into the minds of people you meet, be they dead or alive. Within these mindscapes, you'll understand a little more about the people you're hacking and what led up to that point. You'll also understand why this game is considered survival horror, as the minds of people are constantly changing and often create surreal imagery as a result of your intrusion. It can be surreal and confusing at first, and the game purposely messes with your senses during these moments, but the game gives you enough information to piece together the story yourself. The game also gives you the opportunity to explore the game world a bit beyond crime scene and mindscape investigation. While you only meet a handful of people in person, you can communicate with a number of other people as well. Because much of the game takes place within a tenement, that means these discussions often occur through the doors to their apartments. I assume this was done to allow the developers to flesh out more of the game's lore without having to create unique models for each and every NPC you come across. Almost every person you speak with in-game has a dialogue tree attached to their conversation, so you can choose to get straight to the point with your discussion, or get a bit nosy or snarky with who you're talking to. Oftentimes, while you're exploring the game world, you'll find computers. These usually give little extra tidbits of world building or game lore, documents and emails between characters, and news articles they've been reading before vacating the area. If you decide that you want to break from the norm, most computers have a puzzle minigame. So far as I can tell, the only reward is an achievement, so you have to decide for yourself if finishing all the stages is worth it to you or not. One of the things that I can appreciate about the game is that they did a really good job of teaching you what you have to do in any one moment without outright telling you what to do. There's no hand-holding, but there's enough context clues in most parts of the game to know where to go and what to do to progress. While this isn't perfect every time, this is a lost art that I think a lot of game developers should take note of when creating games. I'm not a huge fan of cyberpunk settings, but even I had to admit that the aesthetics of Observer were cool. I found myself appreciating almost every single area the game threw me into, from the tenement's hallways to the cramped crawl spaces of a quarantine area. The game often reminds you that you're in a dystopian future, characterized by tons of cameras, imagery of peeping eyeballs, and in the fearful or nervous reactions of people you speak with. In this case, the developers managed to create a convincing game world, and it's one of the best, most immersive games I've played in a long time. As far as the music goes, much of it is the typical white noise or general ambiance common in modern survival horror games and is used to build suspense. Though because of cyberpunk, the usual white noise is often electronic in nature with static or electronic crackling. The music, when it plays, is solid and the ambiance fits like a glove. This is further bolstered by the game's great sound design. These three things, the aesthetics, the ambiance, and the sound design, put you into the game, and I can't commend the developers of Observer more for their success in this area. While the game's world and foundation are solid, there's a number of aspects to the game that I found myself annoyed by as I played through it. For example, the game often attempts to overload your senses. There's a lot of occasions, and not just inside Mindscapes, where there's a lot of things to look at. Add to that the fact that the game is difficult to navigate at times, and it feels more like the game developers were trying to purposely confuse you to pad out the game. 
It's also sometimes difficult to tell what exactly the developers want you to look at or do, and it's not uncommon to get lost and wander around game areas aimlessly to try to figure out what to do or where to go in order to progress. The mind hacking sequences are pivotal to the story and game lore, so you think they take these sequences more seriously in terms of storytelling. Instead, many of these sequences are a jumbled mess, and they feel like they were done that way for the sake of being a jumbled mess, and not because it had a purpose for being messy. Some parts of the Mindscape sequences drag on for far too long, overstaying their welcome. Sometimes the game throws the odd puzzle or maze sequence at you. These aren't usually impossible to figure out, but if you're like me, you might take a while to figure out that the game suddenly wants you to go through doors in a specific order. There's no context to this, no warning, simply minutes of walking around before realizing that you're making no progress. These Mindscape sequences are there to tell a story and give background on the characters you're hacking, but it feels as though it could have been handled much better while still retaining the horror aspect. Observer touts itself as a survival horror game, but there's minimal survival and minimal horror. The only real survival in the game comes from these hide-and-seek slash chase segments in Mindscapes where you're hunted or pursued by some manner of creature. If it catches you, it's an instant game over. These segments don't go on for too long and aren't especially difficult, but they effectively kill the game's flow. As for horror, Observer relies almost entirely on jump scares to get a fright from you, luring you into a false sense of security for a long period of time and then having something occur suddenly to startle you. Nothing about the game really felt horror to me until the tail end of the game, which was done surprisingly well and felt genuinely tense and had moments of genuine helplessness and horror. If even half of the game had been developed this well, it had been a masterpiece and would have set the bar pretty high for other games of this genre. Moving on to the game's audio and lore, I found the voice acting in the game, outside of the protagonist, Daniel, to be not that great. A good voice actor can breathe life into a character, and the one for Daniel does an amazing job of making his character believable and relatable. The rest of the voice acting in the game ranges from bad to decent, and while I could tell these people tried their hardest, it didn't really feel natural. You can usually tell when someone's reading off a script when they're voice acting, and almost every person outside of Daniel sounds this way. I can tell because I write and read off my own scripts. It has a similar kind of sound to it. I'd be able to forgive the voice acting at the dialogue, and their accompanying trees weren't so boring. The exposition is predictable, and most people you talk to in the game have a tendency to say the same things, just in different words. I'm not expecting Shakespearean levels of character dialogue here, but because a lot of the game's world building is done through these interactions, it's easy to see why the overall lack of interesting dialogue in a dialogue-heavy game can be a bit of a problem. One minor gripe I had about the game was its synchronization. This feature is not explained well, but often thrust upon you completely at random. While the game hints at what might happen if you fail to medicate, running out is almost impossible if you're even the slightest bit thorough exploring the game world. It felt as though this was a largely unnecessary addition to the game, or perhaps an aspect of the game that wasn't fully fleshed out before the game had to be sent out. It does nothing for the game world, and tells us very little about the protagonist, so why is it there? Perhaps it's just a missed opportunity. A thing that really puzzled me about the game is that it had a pre-launcher. This normally isn't a big deal if it serves a purpose, because most big games these days have launchers themselves, or are tied to a greater launcher, but Observer has absolutely no reason to have one itself. Perplexing at first, but I learned quickly why they did it. It has the ability to let you stream the game from the launcher to Twitch. Smart, but intrusive, as it thrusts this feature in your face if you spend more than a few seconds before clicking the play button. We get it, you want us to play the game on Twitch so more people will see it and want to buy it. Which leads me into the game's length. From the moment I started playing till the moment I hit the game's credits, the game lasts around 3 hours, probably closer to 4. I didn't rush through the game either. Checked out a lot of the game's dialogue, looked for collectibles, and read up on the lore when available. I could forgive this if the game wasn't a walking simulator. All you do is walk around. When the most substance the game has is a puzzle minigame, you know your game probably needs a little something more. Bloober Team's previous game, Layers of Fear, suffered the same issue. It has a glorious house to look at, but it's full of empty rooms and with nothing to do but walk through them as you look for things to do but never find it. 
Even then, I can still say Observer is a better game than Layers of Fear, but that's an empty compliment because Layers of Fear set the bar really low. I hadn't planned on adding this bit at the end, but as I was doing research for this script, I couldn't help but laugh when I saw some of the information presented on Observer's Steam page. A Eurogamer review is quoted in the very first video on the page as a splendid hybrid of CSI, Cyberpunk, and Silent Hill. While the first two hit the mark, the claim that the game has anything in common with Silent Hill is the equivalent of attempting to hit a target with a cannon from point blank range and still missing. Silent Hill, at least the better games anyway, dealt more in subtle horror, sensory deprivation, disturbing imagery, and actually had things to do besides walk around. Observer, in comparison, is a noisy, adopted fourth cousin who, genetically, has nothing in common with his distant relative except in this case the genre it claims to be. It has much more in common with games like Amnesia. If you're looking for a survival horror game that grabs you and pulls you into its world, especially one with cyberpunk themes, and you don't mind that there's not a whole lot of substance there, you'll love this game. I'd like an observer more to a very interactive visual novel, a hilariously linear choose-your-own-adventure tale if the choices you make up until the final pages made no difference to the overall story. Because of this, I can't suggest the game at the asking price of $30, which is absolute lunacy for a 4, maybe 5 hour walking simulator. I'd wait for a 15 or $10 price tag, which is definitely closer, in my opinion, to a fair asking price for the content here. Somehow, you made it out. While you catch your breath, hit that subscribe button, then hide with us over on social media. Links to Twitter, Minds, and Twitch are in the description below. Thanks for watching.